All right, so this is going to be a quick overview of what we learned in Part A of WordPress security and SEO. Part A was the security part of the course. We started by learning how to install WordPress securely. We created a secure database using a strong password. We installed WordPress and created strong encryption keys. We renamed the initial um, database prefix as well as the admin username. And we also secured the configuration file and placed it in a safe place. We learned how to be cautious all around. This included talking about the importance of secure passwords and also easy algorithms to help us remember them. We talked about the importance of software updates including WordPress Core as well as any third-party plugins that we used. We learned how to protect our content and media. We learned how to log in securely and we talked about the importance of backing up our WordPress site and we, we made a full backup and talked about how to restore that backup. We used a few different security plugins in Part A. We used a Kismet which is used to stop comment spam and other types of spam. We used a plugin that would limit the login attempts and lock out the user if there were too many login attempts. We used a two-factor authentication plugin which gave us better verification and access control. And we also looked at plugins that had multiple types of security options to protect our site. We learned how to protect certain aspects of our media, such as copywritten text. We stopped the right-click functionality to save an image from the site. We used a private video plugin instead of just publicly embedding a YouTube video. And we learned how to add passwords to certain files and certain, certain directories through cPanel. We also created and optimized a .ht access file for the Apache server we were working on. We could restrict user access to the server files and folders. We could blacklist and whitelist certain IP addresses. And we could make it so only certain IP addresses could access the admin area of WordPress. Finally, we looked at preventing people from browsing server files in their browser, and we also enabled some 301 redirects. So that's the summary of what we learned in Part A. I hope you learned a lot and look forward to moving on to Part B.